This is the first ever image of an actual black hole. It's in the center of a galaxy called M87, 55 million light years away. Until now, all we've had are simulations and hints and cosmological data, but now we can actually see something. And it's, uh, it turns out to be uh, actually quite beautiful and also sort of terrifying. So to talk about that, we have um, a couple of Harvard astrophysicists, Michael Johnson and Andrew Shale, both of whom uh, worked on the project, and they're gonna talk a little bit more about what we're seeing. The famous thing that people say about black holes, the gravitational field so powerful that not even light can escape. But of course, we're seeing something around it. Some stuff does come out. So what comes out, what actually does come out of a black hole? And then what are, what are we seeing? We see this orange sort of nimbus. Um, what, what, what can you tell from that? What are we looking at exactly? Nothing comes out from inside the event horizon, which is the boundary that you probably think of when you're thinking of a black hole. Um, what we're seeing is actually light that was captured on a circular orbit around the black hole and then flung off. That's at the point where um, the gravitational field is so, is so strong that it's making the photons orbit. If the photons venture a little bit too far inside of that orbit, they'll fall in. Once, it, once it's past the event horizon, nothing. But there are things that are sort of at the edge. Once it crosses the event horizon, the material's gone. But as stuff's coming in, it's getting more and more compressed and heated. And there's, there's viscosity from, from magnetic fields that are shearing apart and tearing. And so it's heating everything up. And all of the emission is getting amplified just before it crosses that event horizon. You know, all of this material is getting caught, emitting most of its um, most of its energy once it gets close to the black hole. And at that point, the black hole takes over and is warping it into this distinctive shape. So not only is it an incredible distance away, but the image that we're seeing is also, for all intents and purposes, 50 million years old, right? Like we're we're pretty far behind here in a way. M87 is a very popular target for astronomers, right? All astronomers looking at M87 are looking at the same 50 million year old light. Right. The big difference for us is that you just see this mass of stars, big ball of light. And if you look carefully, you'll see a little jet threading off the side. We zoom in on this image that the Hubble sees. We zoom in by another factor of one or 2,000. That gets us down to the very heart of this entire region. So it's all a game about how, how fine of details can you see. And so what did it take to actually see it? What do you have to do to look that far away? How far is it? What kind of telescopes do you use? So it's about 50 million light years away. Because of that, it's basically so small that we can't look at it with a normal telescope. We basically stitch together telescopes from, from all over the world, from the South Pole to Chile to Hawaii to, to um, Spain, and then record the data there visually, and then go take that data back and um, to sort of try to reconstruct an underlying image of the data. But that's not a straightforward process because we're only sampling effectively a mirror the size of the Earth in a few locations. And from that data set, we have to re-recover the image. So that's a lot of the challenge of the project. I know you haven't had a, a lot of time with it yet, but, but looking at it, does it, uh, does it conform to theory? Is there something that you've learned about black holes that was surprising about it? Does it just say, like, yes, we still understand physics? What, what does the image tell you? So, I mean, to me, we've known that there are these intense concentrations of mass at the centers of galaxies. But I didn't expect for a moment that we really would turn on our telescope and see this ring of light surrounding a 7 billion solar mass black hole. I mean, I expected some messy astrophysical jet, you know, but instead, you know, we see this elemental booming signal. It's, it's, it's really just jaw dropping. So, so in that sense, I, I do think it's a confirmation of this theory, but, but it is, still, you know, even in its confirmation, I find it to be quite surprising. The signal of the of the bright ring is universal; that it comes directly from gravity, and you can do a lot of different things with the astrophysics around the, the black hole. You can heat the um, particles in different ways. You can make it more or less dense, but you always get this ring. So I think a lot of what's coming in the future will be what signals can we now use beyond just the ring in the image? Um, maybe polarization, maybe time variability of the image if we look at it um, from week to week or year to year. Um, to really get at those astrophysical questions. If, if it were possible to look at this with the naked eye, if it were possible to, to fly a ship closer to it, what would it be like to be there? Our images make it look like it's the sleeping giant. But it's not, right? This thing is tremendously dynamical. It's like the surface of the sun. It's boiling and erupting. And, uh, and I think that would just be a 
tremendously exciting environment. M87 is a, is a supermassive black hole with 7 billion times as much mass as the sun. And these are, these are sort of gentle monsters where you can, you can creep up to the event horizon and, and it's actually, uh, it won't tear you apart like it would for a stellar mass black hole. You, you cross the event horizon and, and it, you would, might not even feel it. If you wanted to park a spaceship outside the event horizon, it, you would feel a lot of gravity from the black hole. You'd feel you'd weigh about 200 times as much as you do on the Earth. But you know that's not so crazy that, that you're sitting out this outside this incredible black hole. Uh, but at the same time, you would see you'd see this erupting ball of fire as as in this tr terrifically dynamical system, analogous to to say the surface of the sun. Uh, so it'd be really beautiful to behold. There's another black hole closer to us. It's called Sag A star. It's in the center of our own galaxy, the Milky Way. But just because it's closer doesn't mean it's easier to see. Do we get a chance to look at the one at the center of our own galaxy at some point? So Sag A star in the center of our own galaxy is, is a much better source even for a lot of reasons. We have a lot more detailed probes. Like we can see individual stars going around it and we know its mass and distance much more accurately than M87. Um, the difficulty is a day in the life of M87 is a minute in the life of Sag A star. And so we see these hints of variability in M87 over a week. And that means that for Sag A star, we're expecting to see all sorts of dynamical activity over a you know, minute, which just makes it a much more difficult problem to turn that into a single picture. Michael Johnson, Andrew Shale, thank you so much for doing this. We really appreciate it. Congratulations again. It's an amazing result.